Hi guys, welcome to Little Wicket Railway. I'm Rob and in this video, we're looking at the Daypole Track Cleaner. Now cleaning track is one of my least favorite jobs. So if there's a way to get it done quicker with less effort, then I'm interested. And that's where this comes in. So previously I've tried the small Hornby wagons that have the two abrasive skids underneath that run along the rails but I never felt like it was actually making my rails that much cleaner. I've also tried the Triang van that's got the fluffy pad underneath, but that kept catching on the rails and the point work, and I never really seemed to have much luck with it. And I've seen the CMX wagons and I've heard they're really good, but they cost over 200 pounds and I might be lazy, but I'm also quite tight. So what I was looking for was something in between the Hornby and Triang wagons and the CMX wagon in terms of value that also managed to get my track clean. And that's where this comes in. This has got an RRP of £90. You can get it from the retailers for around £70, but I saw this online for just under £50, and I thought at that price, I might as well give it a go. Before we open it up, please consider subscribing to the channel. I would really appreciate it. And if you find this video useful, then why not give it a like? Okay, let's open this up and put it to the test. The Daypole Track Cleaner has been around for well over 10 years now. There have been a few different versions and a variety of liveries, but this Daypole blue color seems to be the most common. In the box, you get the main unit, which is motorized, but that doesn't mean it will move on its own. You still need a loco to pull it around the layout. It just means that there's a motor in it. The motor takes its power from the track and there are pickups on all eight wheels. The early versions were analog only and needed to be converted to run on DCC, but the newer models like this one are DCC ready, so it'll run on analog, but if you take out this set of wheels and remove these two screws, then the body comes off to reveal an eight pin DCC socket. I'm not going to fit a decoder at the moment, so I'll put all this back together. The motor is switched on and off using this push button, and it rotates a spindle underneath the unit, which you can attach a few different heads to. With the unit, you get three polishing heads and three slightly abrasive heads, and you also get a vacuum head, and that's the one that's fitted at the moment. To change the heads, you use the tool provided. Pinch the tool and insert it into the head like this, and then you just pull and the head should come off the spindle. Then pinch the tool again to remove it from the head. You can see that this head has small fan blades on it and this acts as an impeller which turns the unit into a vacuum that will run along your layout and hoover up any debris. The bits that it sucks up are deposited in this chamber here. I'm really keen to see how effective this is so I'll push this head back in, let's get it on the tracks and see what happens. I've got the wagon coupled up to my class 73 and I'm running both of these on analog. The Class 73 isn't the quietest loco, but combined with the vacuum on the cleaning wagon, this is quite a noisy combo. I'm going to give it a few laps of the track on one loop and see what it can hoover up. I can already hear that it's picking up a few bits, presumably loose bits of ballast. I'll give that a few more minutes and then I'll head back to the desk and we can see what it's managed to collect. So here we are, let's open up the compartment and see what it's managed to hoover up. And just as I thought, it's managed to pick up quite a few bits of loose ballast, which is really good because these are the little bits that can get stuck in points and cause derailments. It's also managed to pick up quite a bit of dust and fluff and just look at this big ball of hair that we've got. So overall, I'm dead impressed with the Hoover. Another key feature is that you can fill this reservoir with cleaning fluid and that flows into the foam under the unit, which gives the rails a good scrub as it moves along. The flow of the fluid is controlled by this small weight which just sits inside the container. Daypole recommend using their own brand cleaning solution but I don't have any of that, so I'm going to use a small amount of isopropyl alcohol, also known as IPA. I'm not going to fill the reservoir just yet though because once it's filled you can't turn the unit upside down and I want to do a couple of things to the underside first. I'm going to swap the vacuum head for a polishing head and I'm also going to attach this extra brush which fits into this recess here and is held in place with the screw provided. So with this combination I should be able to give my rails a really good clean and polish. I'll add in some IPA now and we're ready to head to the track. Again I left this running for a good few minutes and hopefully that's long enough for some of the IPA to flow through into that sponge and start making its way onto the rails. I was a bit worried that the head, the foam or the brush might catch on the rails or some of the point work as it went around. And I did have one derailment very early on in the running session, which resulted in the cleaner tipping off the layout. But I think this was due to me not pushing the head in fully. Even though the unit ended up on its side, the plug stayed in and only a very small amount of IPA made it out of the reservoir. After I pushed the head onto the spindle a bit further, I didn't have any other issues. And with every lap, things seemed to be running smoother. 
So having made its way around the layout a few times, let's get it back onto the desk and see how much dirt it's been able to pick up. Before we turn it over to check out the brushes, let's take a look inside the reservoir to see how much IPA is left. And there's almost nothing left in there, but I think the foam is still damp, which is why I've put this paper towel down. Any remaining IPA will evaporate off quite quickly. I'll put the stopper back in and let's flip it over. And just by the color, it's pretty obvious that the polishing head and the fluffy brush have scrubbed up a lot of grime. And I honestly think in the short time that I had this running, it improved the performance of the class 73 that was pulling it. And I didn't capture this on camera, but I just wanted to show you. I gave the foam pad a wipe with the paper towel to remove any IPA before I put the unit back in the box. And just look at how much dirt was coming off that. So there you go, that's a quick overview of the Daypole track cleaner. And I do actually think this works. It does leave your track cleaner, which is the most important thing. For around 70 pounds new or 40 to 50 pounds secondhand, it's good value considering that it's got both mechanical and chemical cleaning functions. This is available in double O gauge and N gauge and Daypole also make accessories. So I've already mentioned the cleaning fluid, but they also have packs that contain spare parts and spare cleaning heads. So that's about it for this video. Special thanks to my members and patrons for their support. Thanks for watching and I will hopefully see you again soon.